So I just recently got a DSLR and I was wondering, how much better is it than my old point and shoot? So I decided to find out by comparing my old Nikon Coolpix L610 to my new Canon Rebel S01. And yes, I know they're from different companies, but this is a normal point and shoot. And yes, while this is the world's smallest DSLR, it's pretty much a T5i in a smaller body, so I think it's a fair comparison. All right, so let's talk about specs. The Nikon Coolpix L610 has 16 megapixels and can record 1080 video up to 30 frames per second and 720 video up to 60 frames per second. In the settings, there's really not much to see. You can't control aperture or ISO or shutter speed. It's pretty much all automatic. Now the Canon Rebel SL1. This camera is much better when it comes to settings. You can control things like aperture, ISO, shutter speed, and everything else you could find on another DSLR. It has 18 megapixels and can record 1080 video up to 30 frames per second and 720 video up to 60 frames per second. And moving on over to design, the Nikon Coolpix L610 has a fairly common point and shoot design. You have things like pop-up flash and the buttons are at a pretty comfortable location. There's no touch or flip out screen, but honestly that doesn't bother me too much in day-to-day -day use. The only real issue with the design is that the grip is tiny. It's difficult to hold comfortably if you have anything larger than baby hands, so don't get the camera for the grip. But if you consider that most point and shoots don't even have a grip, I'm thankful that this one has one. The Canon Rebel SL1, on the other hand, is a normal design for a DSLR, except the fact that it's so small. Some buttons to click you have to do a little shimmy with your hands, but overall it's fine. While it doesn't have a flip out screen, it does have a touch screen, which is cool for things like tap to focus. The grip on this camera is pretty terrible, but since the camera body itself is so small, I kind of have, have to give it a pass. But still, if you compare it to any other grip on any other DSLR, you're going to be disappointed. One of the main differences in design is that it has a physical lens that you can focus and zoom with, and you can switch out lenses depending on your needs. Speaking of focus, both of these cameras have pretty good autofocus. Neither of them have dual pixel, but the Canon has hybrid and the Nikon has contrast detect AF. Now shooting with the cameras and the camera quality. I used to be fine with shooting with the Nikon. It's not bad, it's easy since it's a point and shoot. And I had never had a DSLR before, so I thought it was fine. You just point at the thing you want to take a picture at and you shoot. That's why it's called point and shoot. But now that I have a DSLR, taking photos and videos with it is way more fun. You get to adjust the settings and all that and work with the lighting and experiment with focal length. Speaking of quality, I think we have to agree that the Canon just does it way better. And on the Nikon, it's not too bad, but it looks over sharpened and blurry at the same time to me. It's very saturated and the colors are nowhere near as good. The Canon just does it way better with overall quality, at least in color. Now let's talk about price. Since these cameras both came out a few years ago, they're both pretty cheap. You can find the Nikon for as cheap as $40 on eBay, anywhere up to $150. Whereas with the Canon, you can find it for around $300 on eBay, which might sound expensive to some of you, but in the DSLR and camera world, $300 is not very much at all. Overall, if you're looking for a camera, whether it's a smartphone camera from 2012 or a red weapon, I honestly think that between these cameras, it's worth it to spend the money on the Canon because I can not recommend this Nikon. The thing about the Nikon Coolpix L610 is that yes, it is very cheap, it's not expensive at all. I feel like if you're just looking for a good point and shoot, you're not finding that here. You can just find something so much better when it comes to color and overall quality. But I can recommend the Canon Rebel SL1. And like I said, it's pretty much a T5i in a smaller body, but that's not necessarily a bad thing when you consider that the T5i starts at around $400 on eBay and can get anywhere up to $700. So my answer is yes. It is worth it to get this DSLR over this point and shoot. 